Hello and welcome back to the Talking Wealth Podcast. Now today we're going to talk about maximizing your trading potential. But before we get into that exciting topic, I want to introduce my co-host Janine Cox. How are you today? Fantastic. How are you today? I'm excited. Football starts soon. Oh no. Oh gosh, we have to be talking about Go footy cats. again. I know that's going to make headlines on our Tuesday night show, isn't it? Uh, well, it's only two couple of weeks <laughs> away. We're recording this on the Are you going to go to any live games? I will. I'm you thinking will. about, you know, getting an AFL membership this year because I'm so close to the MCG. And thinking about or going to? Well, I'm, well, I've got to sneak that one past my wife. I get into that. When I'm thinking about buying things, it's always about how much trouble am I going to be in and how long that's going to be. No, I say just do it. It's just do it, okay, because I might only be in trouble for half an hour. I'll but talk to her. You're going to talk to her. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to talk about maximising your trading potential, but we're going to talk about mm. the role of technical analysis. Yep. Also, the role of trading strategies and mm -hmm. also trading tools and platforms. That's what I want to talk about today because there's a lot of people that uh, want to trade mm -hmm. but they don't know where to start or don't know what trading is or or they think they're traders but they're not necessarily traders in our version of it. But I want to go into um, – this is really about somebody. If you've been trading for a while in the marketplace, then this podcast is for you. This mm -hmm. is what I want to talk about because how often do we see people – you know, email us in or, you know, contact us for our live show or they're speaking to our team on the phone and inquiring about our education. I, well, I would think probably about three quarters of the people that do our trading education, our diploma, probably three quarters, probably even maybe more than that, are people that have been trading for three to ten years or more. Yeah. And I spoke to one only a week or so ago that he's been trading for 16 years. Wow. And he's only just on module one now and, and he goes – and he's in Singapore. I think it was 16 years, but he's in Singapore and he goes, you know, he's telling me all these things that were going on with his trading. And he said, you know, I wasn't really making money, but I wasn't mm. really losing money. So I thought I was doing okay, but then I really wasn't doing okay. And so what so, actually made him decide to pick up the phone? It was more of the, it's the, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll always you get, get what you've always off. had. You're That's just so going to keep. And so people say to me, oh, I've been trading for 16 years, but if you've got 16 years of experience... Mm. Or have you got one year's experience well, 16 look, times over? He's got over. a lot of experience in the market. Correct. Which, you know, you can tell the difference between people who come to us who mm. have actually had that experience in the market. Their understanding of the practical side of it mm. is obviously there, mm. but it's just pulling everything else together that needs to happen. So Yeah. Well, it's so exactly that, what so we're about. Sort about. of, in a way, yeah. like you could say that they're, are they disadvantaged or are they do they have an advantage in already having that experience? I would... Can I honestly say they're at a mm. disadvantage? Yeah, that can be your opinion. That's my I know you're probably going to argue with by that one. But I think I would prefer people, and, and again, most of our students have already been trading for mm. years. But to me, having a clean slate mm -hmm. means you don't come with baggage, mm. emotional baggage from trading, bad, bad um, reference points to your trading. Yep. Plus, you, we don't have to untrain the bad habits. The bad habits that people have trading is phenomenal. And I don't know, mm. we know when dealing with people on support and they're, they're trying to bring in things from different methods that they think they know or that they might have picked up. Yeah, so what you're saying is that they can't switch that off. It's hard because... And then mm. turn their brain on to just, this is a new thing. I need to get my head around the fact that I'm not doing what I did before and I'm, I've got to actually think about... The fact that I'm starting from mm. ground zero and I know nothing. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had a guy that I, we were, he was one of our students. Before he came to us, he'd spent well over $100,000 on trading education with multiple courses mm. and he still was hit and miss and struggling. And, and you know, we were teaching him, but he kept trying to bring in this old stuff. And I said, mate, you Let came to us to sort mm. your trading out. And he went, yeah, yeah, I paid 100 grand or so, whatever it was for that. I can and understand I went, yeah, how it feels. But You've paid for stuff that's mm. not working for yeah. you. So you either want to hang on to the baggage or move forward and move on. Mm. Um, and I said, it's up to you. Do you want to trade better or worse? Your choice. Mm. And I said, whilst you keep hanging on to stuff that you've proven is not working mm. for you and you've proven it time and time again, how do we get you to move forward? Because it's not about trading often. It's about trading well. It's about following rules. It's about having good rules and, and a good process plan, good strategies. I'll be interested to hear more about this student down the track to hear how he's going. Yeah, I mean, he changed around and I, and I don't know how many times mm. we've done that. And I remember, you know, when we first started doing our CFD course, I remember I had this guy, he, he came to me and he was doing 
you know, 30, 40 plus trades a month. Oh, is this the one he was getting about a 50% you know, win rate? But he was still no, making a profit. No, no, this guy was struggling. And right. he came and did our CFD course when we when we first started it. And and then I remember at the end of the he did the course and then I remember a few months later he sent me an email and he said, Dale, he said, what you've done is giving me my life back. He said, my life was trading CFDs mm. and now I make five times the amount of money and I go and play golf, spend time with my wife, mm. I go and do this. He said, my, I've got my whole life back and I'm far more profitable. Mm -hmm. And to me is if you keep hanging on to the old baggage and what you did in the past, you don't or you can't move through into new stuff. Yep. And to me it's like, you know, as we both say, and we say this in our course too, our diploma course is don't trust us, mm. test it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at least trust us to do yeah. that because that's what we're experts in well, doing. Well, that's what they're Follow the process. To do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I often say to students when I'm, you know, involved in the support with them, I say, your job is to be teachable. Mm. My job is to teach you. My job is to support you. My job is to mentor you and mentoring you most empowers people, you. They pay and come in thinking that I've got to be teachable. No, they don't. A lot of people come in to the course, well, not a lot. I'd say some people come into the course and thinking, well, I'm going to learn just how to buy and sell. Mm. And that's like the least amount of thing you need to be worried about. That is the small part it's of the it. It's small. Buying and selling, well, it mm. depends on everything you do prior to that. And we'll talk a bit about that as right. we go through the podcast. That will be but helpful. a lot of beliefs or perceptions that people have about trading are false realities. Mm. And it's, as they say, you don't know what you don't know. And as we teach people, the more they tell us, they didn't realise how much they didn't know. And that's probably the most, two things that are the most common statements we get from students is, why didn't I do this years ago when I first found you? Mm. Second thing is, wow, I didn't realise how much I didn't know. And this is mm. full-time traders to anybody, even, you know, people have been trading. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've ever spoken to anyone and I get mm. to speak to a lot of people mm. that contact us regarding investing their funds. Yep. Some of them actually want to trade for themselves because they might have a large sum of money, but they want us to invest mm -hmm. some as well. And I don't think that I cannot recall any of them saying that they didn't think wow or, oh, my goodness, I didn't realise what this course was. So mm, They don't. Mm. So I'm going to go into, we're going to talk a bit about four different types of people. Yep. And then we're going to talk about, you know, the role of technical analysis. Types of people or... Well, types of traders, sort of, I suppose. Okay. It's sort of like so because this podcast is really for people that have been trading for a while. Yep. So if you've never traded in your life before, never bought a share in your life, you'll still get a lot out of this. I'm glad that you're covering it, this because we often do things for the beginners. Yeah, we do. And ignore the people who are already out there who mm. might be, you know, experiencing these, um, have these different experiences. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I prefer to teach people from a clean slate. Mm. Uh, only because it's it's better journey for them. See, my experience is a little bit different in that. I know mm. that it's a better journey for them and it's harder for them to get their head around that they have to just leave everything else and shut the door and walk through mm. and think, okay, I've dropped my bags here. I'm now my mind's open and ready to go. Mm. It's it, But I find that those people, when it comes to actually trading, mm. they don't have the, I guess it's a, some people think in two dimensions, so that they might be really easy to teach from an academic point of view, but they can't get their head around things spatially. You know, like how yes. some people are really good at designing rooms, they can see how mm. everything fits and their mind just sort of wraps around what has to be done. My wife's like that. Yeah, whereas other people, they'll walk into the room and they have no idea. They'll mm. see, see things separately. They might think, oh, yeah, I can put a different carpet down or paint the walls a different colour or That's whatever. Me. They don't know how to wrap everything and pull it all together, mm. right? So, and it's really good that you're saying that because it makes, you know, it makes people realise that you're human um, mm. and that's important. Yeah, I go to ouch see. when somebody hurts me. <laughs> yeah, when I hit you. <laughs> when, you when you hit me. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the people who have already been there and done that, they've had that, um, I guess they've felt it in the gut. Yeah. You know, so they feel the, they felt the trades, they know what has to be um, put into practice when they're in the market and how to work how to work the market sort of thing. Maybe not to the best advantage, but mm. they at least have really good understanding of but how that works. Sometimes that's a bit of a boat anchor too because of the painful memories of big losses. Yeah. Makes them fearful of taking mm. trades too. So there's but that's where the, the But I find a lot of I find a lot of people that. are opposite to that. They're, they're too eager. 
mm. to put the trades on. And Didn't when they actually those. start learning, they're willing to put the trades on to, mm. too quickly without just sitting back and yep. waiting. We see all the amount of it. But anyway, yeah. let's go through the four. Okay, As I said, do that. again, this is for people that have been trading for a while, but mm -hmm. if you've not been trading before, it's okay. You'll still learn a lot of stuff out of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You'll probably learn, a, well, you want, you want probably, you will learn a better process by listening to this podcast. So the first person or the first traders that we come across, or we, as I said, we've broken them into four sections and one is these hit and miss with your trades. Mm. So these are the traders that are sort of, they're in the trade, sometimes they win, sometimes they lose and, and really the results that they're getting are not necessarily bad but they're not necessarily good. They may be treating water, they may be behind for a while, they may be in front mm. for a while but they're just spinning their wheels in the mud. Okay. So they're quite hit and miss. So when you say hit and miss, that's what you're meaning. So you say, mm. you're just talking about not necessarily their style, but you're talking about the results of the hit results. and miss? Their results, yep. Yeah. Hmm. We see a but lot could of that. Be, could that be an indication of their style being hit and miss or could it be an indication of the market at the time? No, their style. Style. Nothing, there's nothing to do about the market. It's about their style mm. because they think they've got a good process. They mm. think they've got good strategies. And sometimes they know they don't have good strategies or process, but they still. I know they you've want... had quite a few people admit mm. that to you. And they don't. And they go, no, I just guess or I... You know, I go, why are you looking at the market or why are you looking at that stock? Oh, well, volume's just increased. I thought I'd get into it. Or somebody's told me to buy this or I get a, you know, whatever the, the, the tip, tip is, they do that and it's more guesswork. But sometimes they've got to go through a process to get to the point where they realise it's guessing, mm. where they think they're doing actual research and proper strategies. So these are the, the first ones that they're really just hit and miss, mm -hmm. but they're just not getting ahead. Um, and yeah. to me, so we're going to talk about so that guy or, you mentioned before was yeah. a good example of this situation, wasn't it? No, he's sort of more one of the other ones, but you know, he's, um, was he, he more a cowboy or not? Well, he was very much a cowboy and we've seen a few of those over yeah. the last two and a bit decades. I've only ever about. met about, I think two or three women who I would put as a, as cowgirls. As cowboys, yeah, yeah. Not cowboys. I said cow women, cowgirls. I think you cow just girl. have to use the right term. Or cow person. Cow person. Okay, cow person. Good. I don't like calling women <laughs> cows, but anyway, you said it, not me. <laughs> cow person. Okay. Okay. But you are right, you know, and some of these people, and there's the, they they have this, um, can I say, no, not an overconfidence, but an inflated sense of how good they are. Mm. And it may not, and sometimes it's ego, uh, but sometimes it's just blind arrogance that they mm. think they're better than what they are, but, and they're not um, what you're talking about. But did you want to go through number two before we keep, before I keep rambling on? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm. Cause I'm sort of get I feel like I'm going down the rabbit hole with this one. Oh, are you? Why? Well, let's get you out of the rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause you Thanks. only meet rabbits in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I hope so. <laughs> so did you want to talk about number two now? Yep. That would be great. So this is one about that you've tried lots of different trading styles from short-term day trading, following reports and tipping sheets to turning what seem potentially good trades into long-term buy and hold positions. How many of those have you seen? <laughs> People send you their portfolio, oh. their, you know, their, their new students, and Makes they go, oh, these were trades that I did before I was at, you know, started doing your diploma course mm. and just disregard those, Dale. Yeah, yeah. And I go, why did you do that? And I go, oh, it was a trade. And I yeah, but why didn't you exit it? They go, well, it started to go down. I didn't know where to sell. So mm. I say, well, you, intend, tend, you, you turned a good trade into a long-term buy and hold strategy. Now, do you find that happens when they start learning the right way or what? Do, what's the transformation that happens with those well, it's people? Well, it's that fear of loss, you know. Are you talking about if they've come on board and they start learning the proper strategy? Well, they, they don't do that anymore. They learn not to do that. Yeah, but then how do they make that transition? Well, that's what we teach them to make that transition and giving them solid rules around all that. But I'm saying a lot of people will buy, they'll get a hot tip or yeah. they'll do, they'll think they've done some research or they might have found this stock that's five cents mm. and they go, oh, it's going to go to $2. So they buy in and it might go up for a little bit and then it goes down and then they're basically in losing position and they go, okay, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. And then for the next five years, it goes nowhere because... They're now not trading it anymore. Mm. They've just put it, left it in their portfolio because they just don't know what to do with it. Mm. And we see that every single week on our live stream. We see people with stocks that they own that they've bought and they're down way below what they paid for them and they're holding them because they just don't want to realise the loss. So these so are those you, sorts of people. Are you talking about more people who were trading short term or are you, is this really related to those? Or well, are you talking over. about people who are really more 
they were thinking long term to start with? No, they were thinking sometimes that they confuse all that. Sometimes they're trading short term. Mm. Sometimes they're trading medium term. Sometimes oh they're going goodness, long term. They trump sometimes. Stuck in that sometimes they'll they'll subscribe to tipping sheets or their broker reports mm. or they'll be in chat forums. They'll be all over the. They're sort of like, I call them the shotgun technique people. They just blast out everywhere. Mm. And try all these sorts of things, but then they just don't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so because they don't have proper strategies and proper processes, proper tools, proper analysis that we're going to talk a bit about. So that's so, why we say that, hmm. I mean, I think for someone who's stuck in that position, all they need to do is pull back a bit and think a bit more medium term rather than short term. Because Well, that's, sometimes that is just, I know hmm. we've done that too. I mean, I know of, you know, we've both spoken in many, many groups for decades, you know, and I remember speaking to a guy in Adelaide um, who um, who came to me talking to us about our course and he told me how he trade and I said, mate, just pull back, go from a daily chart, do all your mm. trades on a, on a monthly chart or from what you're telling me because you're using the wrong tools for the wrong job. And he emailed me a month later and he goes, he went back over all his trades for the prior two years and he said if it all he'd done was gone on, did everything on a monthly chart, he would have made a lot of money. Yep. And I said, and I gave you that for free. Ah, Imagine what we can nice do with you. you. If you do our course, mm. I don't know whether he enrolled or not, but I just gave him the tip for free because of what he was talking about. I went, no, you're being incongruent. What mm -hmm. you're doing is incongruent with what the outcome that you want. And yep. often people in it don't see it. Mm. And because we're so good at mentoring people and teaching traders, we can see their issues even though they can't because mm. they're stuck in it and they don't know where to go. So number three, uh, these are people that have experienced massive gains from some trades and, and indeed they've also experienced some massive losses in there. They have this really high risk, high reward type of strategy and that really appeals to them like, you know, yes. no guts, no glory type approach, that sort of stuff. But when it boils down to reality, they're not really profitable in what they're trading. But they do know. Well, not necessarily, but they, they go on those big roller coaster rides mm. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not really profitable because I've met people like that before who mm. are profitable, but they they get to a point where they don't, they can see that what's the point in that anymore. It's like, yeah, I just, why do I want to do can, that? Well, I, I do meet some people that are sort of like this, but I do talk to a lot of them, especially FX traders, mm. you know, they're doing this. And I go, and I say, don't add up how many hours a week you do this. And they go, yeah. And I go, okay, now look at the amount of money that you think you're making out of it. And they went, yeah. And I said, now divide the two, mm -hmm. one into the other one. And how much per hour are you making? Mm -hmm. And they go, why? And I said, just do it. And I go, because I can guarantee you'd make more money at McDonald's than doing what you're doing. And when they actually do it, they realize what they're doing. Yeah. I and mean, that, that's, that's an so example often. of some that you've spoken to. And would you mm. say that's the majority of people? That I'd say a lot of people trading FX, that's the, that's, that's the case. A lot. Because mm. FX is like, to me, and, and not being rude to people, is FX is the biggest market in the world. It's trillions of dollars, right? Yeah. But what makes any individual, like even you or me, what makes mm. us think that we're so much better and so much more knowledgeable, intelligent, and skillful than the industry, than the industry mm -hmm. that pay people millions of dollars to mm. do this yeah. and have all the big six systems around. What makes an individual think that they're better, especially an untrained individual mm -hmm. and one that, you know, hasn't had massive experience and the millions and millions of dollars to trade with. The FX industry knows this mm. and so they play on people and they mm. create suckers, rallies Look, and all I've sorts had, of I, stuff. I'd talk about maybe this person was mm. the exception, but I remember this one person who had actually made a few massive trades in that market and made a lot of money, um, literally could have retired from that and then went, the ego got the better of the person and they went and- And they lost put, it all. Well, hang on a minute. And it's like, if you think about people like Trump, you know, mm -hmm. Donald Trump and, all, and these big times. entrepreneurs, they've been broke, right? A lot mm -hmm. of times. And then they come back and they make squillions after that because they just know how to bring themselves back up or they've got connections or they but, know the uh, processes. Not but, necessarily. I don't think that's a good example with Trump because obviously he's, you know, went to good schools and very knowledgeable and had the right people around him, mm. very knowledgeable people around him. I'm talking about individuals mm. who were trying to trade with, you know, high leverage and making big gains and stuff No, well, like this, this person wasn't Donald Trump. I can't, no. you know, claim that I've actually sat and chatted with him. I haven't had the, the mm. pleasure of that yet. However, I'm talking about someone who was actually trading those high, big trades. We're talking like multi-million dollar trades yeah. and and couldn't make a million bucks overnight yeah. and 
and could lose. We've got an example in our advanced course of one guy trading. Mm. Whole story that he wrote back to me. Yes, um, that's right. Because I remember I, I met him in Sydney one night at a function. He came to see me speak, and and he was telling me, you know, he was, he was very, very, well. very, very successful in property. Really mm. successful, multi millionaire in property. But he had this high risk, high gain type of scenario, and he was saying to me, "Oh, I said, what's going on?" He goes, "Oh, I'm struggling," and I go, "Why?" And he goes, "Oh, I'm struggling." To st- to take my stop losses. And I said, I said, right. I said, you got a pen and paper? He said, yeah. And I said, write this name down. And he says, what's that? I said, this is a stockbroker. You contact him and tell him I told you, but you tell him to sell if it hits your stop loss and you tell him your stop loss, he'll do it every single time. Mm. And the next time I saw the guy, I said, how are you going? He was losing money because he wasn't following. Mm. He didn't take my advice. But, and he was, ne- he, he's never done our diploma course. He was just a trader I knew. And, um, and then a few months later, he just melted down mm. and he sent me this big, long email and he was just, what do I do? And I said, well, you know what you should be doing. You're just not mm. doing it. And that, that email went into our diploma uh, in our advanced course, just to share with people what can happen to these types of people. Cause during the GFC, mm. I met so many people. I made, met people that made a million dollars in six months and lost it in six days. I met so many people who lost half a million dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. It's just mm. the list was just on and on and on. And yeah, on. so it, so it doesn't really matter. Like the the one mm. example that I'm talking about dwarfs in in comparison to your many, really. <laughs> oh, look, back up loads of them, but again, it's <laughs> about I'm it's talking, about. Because to me, when he first told me about this, I sort of my jaw sort of dropped because he said um, my ego got the better of me, and, they he was, do. and it was he was able to admit it. And he said he placed this trade, and instead of taking it off at the end of the day, they freeze. He left it go yeah. and he ended up losing a whole, a million bucks overnight, literally. And then they try and that. chase that the next day. But then, but he, he's, he was such a good trader though. I mean, he was able to get the money back. It's not d- mm. different to some of these people. But he'll lose I'm it again about. until he mm. learns not to do that sort yeah. of stuff. So these are the roller coaster people. Mm-hmm. They enjoy the thrill of the roller coaster, but you still need to have, you know, trading strategies, good technical yeah. analysis. You need good trading schools, tools mm. around you. And a good process because it's not just about having a big win. Yeah, you need to right. have consistently big wins or good wins and very yeah. Losses. And I think I think some of the things that an advantage to someone mm. who has traded before and has even looked at their results mm. is that someone who hasn't done that before they don't really absorb what it means. Like they'll look at the back testing and they'll sort of think, oh, that's a good result. They look at the top and think mm. it's a good good strategy. But it's not until you say to them, okay, now let's go down and drill down in your results. In your results, you've got two losses in a row and how much did you lose and how are you going to feel about that when you lose the first one and mm. what about when you lose the second one? Because mm. we've both trained lots of people and once they go through a certain point in the course, then you and I get the opportunity to work with, to them, work yeah. with them. Not everybody, but, um, you know, from time to time we, we actually do answer some emails with the trading support that we offer um, as part of the course. And it's only then that we start really ha- – some of them – really start to, to get it because you've got to learn the academic side of it first. You do. But then it's not until you're actually really faced with the trading and this is where these guys who have already traded, they know what it feels like to actually go through that process. They know, well, okay, if a stock jumps up, I get questions sometimes from someone, oh, what do I do if a stock jumps up and it's way above my entry point? Well, you've got to make a decision, don't you? Do you? You're going to still take the trade, yeah, but I'm or not. not. I'm, I'm not. Talk, these are. I'm talking about these people that ride that whole roller coaster of emotions and that. But mm. we often get them, and there are some that are like this gentleman or person that you're talking about, who probably is highly educated at trading. Yeah. Whose emotions are getting better of them, causing them to make some mm. mistakes. Whereas others are just making mistakes because their trading strategy is good. They're 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 buying several. Look, I think good. you and I have you good. and I have had conversations about this mm. before, because. You talked about the baggage, but we all come with some sort of baggage, Correct. right? So, you know, the, the great thing about doing a more structured training that can help all of these people in the list is the fact that they do get that structure. Correct. Because it doesn't matter whether you've mm. traded before or not, you've got, everybody's got mm. some psychological stuff that they bring with them. What you're saying mm. is that by having traded and, and stuffing around, that essentially that you have more baggage. That's what you're really saying. Sometimes they do, yeah, because these people more, that are mm. that are not necessarily educated trading trading using doing the roller coaster ride, we get them all the time, and they're yep. the majority, not the minority. 
But if the I, educated ones are the minority, but these these ones are fearful of making decisions yeah. because they're fearful of making the wrong one again and then costing them a lot of money and then, mm. then their husbands or wives are scared of them trying to trade the market again because they're going, you know, it's like they're holding a gun over their head going, don't you lose more but money. It, but as long as they can be humble and sort of think – yeah. And some of them struggle with that, but Correct. when they're going through the course, because they think that they're smarter or whatever, but if mm. they can just be humble about it and then uh, try to appreciate the baggage that they probably have got, mm. then when they come through the course, they're going to do it much quicker. But that's part opinion. of what we do in the course. We help them realize mm. all of that. Let's get on to the last one. Otherwise, we'll keep talking about okay. those four and we still got to get on to all the things we're going to so, talk a bit so about. So number four is yeah. uh, you are consistently profitable. However, you're looking to take your trading to the next level. Because hmm. we That's see people like that that are profitable, mm. but they're not as profitable as what they feel that they can be. I remember a guy mm. who was trading and he used mm. to trade for a few months of the year and then take part of the year off. Yep. So once he actually got to his go his goals for that year, mm. he'd just decide, right, I'm going on a holiday for three months. But how's that this person? No, but but what he found was he still found that he was inconsistent with what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And he didn't he knew he didn't have even though he was profitable, he knew he didn't have a structure oh, on okay. what he was doing. So he came and did our course for that reason because just to get that structure in place to make him feel, I guess, more um, confident with where he was going down okay. the track. Mm. Okay. So I want to get into technical analysis and some might say, well, why are you going to talk about technical analysis? Because And the reason is because we're talking trading. It's pretty simple to do. And, and what I mean by that, and we'll explain a bit about technical analysis in a second, but... How I'm going to explain it is if you are more, uh, the longer you intend to hold a, a stock for or a share for, the more fundamental analysis comes to the fore. So you're looking at long-term mm. viability of the company and profitability of the company. So the longer, and I'm talking two years plus, but the shorter the term you're thinking of holding the stock, the f more technical analysis comes to, to yeah. the fore. So if you're looking at day trading, you only need to look at technical analysis. But if you're looking at holding a share for 10 years, you only need to look at fundamental analysis. But technical analysis will help you in that anyway. Yeah. So that's sort of the context I want to set it in. But I want to talk a bit about technical analysis. Do you want to explain a little bit of it? Okay. Um, to someone who likes, I guess, maths, it's not really maths, but the, the underlying principle behind it is maths, but um, it's much simpler than maths when you really look at it. It's a lot of pattern analysis. So for someone who's actually highly visual um, as well, the mm -hmm. technical analysis is perfect. And let's face it, probably 80% of people are highly visual people. Correct. But you still and haven't explained what technical analysis so is. So technical analysis is actually the technique of actually applying um, different types of analysis to price and time information on a stock. So you've got data, essentially. Mm -hmm. You're analysing data. You're analysing historical data um, to determine – Based on history, what's likely to occur in future? So that's sort of it in a big picture. Mm. So when we're saying to people what we teach in our course is price, pattern, time. Mm. If you've got all those three, you'll be a great trader. Now, I know most people understand a little bit of price, maybe a tiny little bit about, about, about pattern. But generally when you talk to people in the industry, so to speak, it's always about price and volume. You know, it's looking yeah, at looking at historical data to look at the patterns in historical data in price, pattern, and time to work out if there's consistencies there and repeatable things. Well, a lot of the a lot time. of the indicators are all price they based are. indicators. That's, and that's why, why it's most people mostly struggle. price. Mm. And so we'll we'll get to that in a minute anyway. But why do we use technical analysis? I guess you need structure and a process. Mm -hmm. So the technical analysis actually gives you that. It allows you to look at things. Um, from different angles and to make um, a structured but assessment. In its purest form, what are we looking for when we're analysing a stock? Whether it's going up or down in simple terms. Okay, so that's mm. identifying up or down trends. Mm -hmm. So that's the simplest form what we're yeah. trying to do. Is it moving up or is it moving down? So mm -hmm. that's the simplest form. And why are we looking to do that? Because we want to make some money out of it. We want to know the direction so that yep. we know whether it's worth the – I guess the risk is worth the, or the reward is likely to be worth the risk. So we're looking for something that's turning from down to up mm. for a view to buy at the earliest possible time with the lowest possible risk. Yep. And we're looking to exit something that's going up mm -hmm. at the, just before it goes down or as it's going after down. After it's turned. After it's turned 
at the earliest possible time without losing too much money to secure a reasonable amount of profit yeah. over whatever time frame it is. Yeah, so it could be like weeks, mm. months. Um, it could be long-term trading mm. that you're doing that over. Well, that's mm. the important part about technical analysis. It can be done intraday, like seconds and minutes within a day, mm. daily, weekly. Monthly, a lot of it doesn't really. work. No, like there's a lot of patterns that do work on the very short term, mm. but there's a lot of the techniques that don't work as well on the daily, mm. which is interesting. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I know a lot of uh, a lot of traders that come to us use a variety of technical analysis tools and, and, and indicators, you know, computer-generated mm. indicators, you know, such as moving averages, multiple moving averages, RSIs or relative strength um, index, Bollinger Bands is another one, um, MACDs is another one, um, Stochastics is another one, and they use them to identify potential entry and exit points. But in a lot of those what I've just mentioned, there's a whole lot of issues around them, those, isn't there? Look, I guess with any technical or technique that you use, there can be issues around it. And if you don't fully mm. understand how all of that comes together, then you're probably not using it the way that it should be used. Mm. So with those, you and I both experimented with those indicators a mm. long, long time ago. Mm. And, um, and you did a lot of work with trend lines versus some of the moving averages when you well, were. Well, it's just working out what is not necessarily what's easy, mm. if that makes sense. It's what's best. Mm -hmm. Because it's always, as you said, it's about making money. So just because I can open a chart and there's these indicators on it, that's easy. But is it the best way to trade? Mm. That's the question. And I know, let me ask you another question. How often do you see people using the wrong tools well, in terms of these sorts of tools for the wrong market. Yeah. But and not the even wrong the wrong time market, frame. the time frame, the purpose. Yeah. Correct. And so it's like it's like using fundamental analysis to day trade. Yeah, but some of these this indicators could work. be something that flags to you that now is the time to be looking at the stock, not necessarily to buy it. Correct. Yeah. yeah some tools like these are not just not a buy and sell rule. They're just mm. saying, hmm, this could be happening or you maybe this might be a little bit of a watch point because one of the key benefits of technical analysis is you can trade any market including property market you can look at ch anything with mm. a chart you can trade so you can look at that from stocks to bonds to forex to you name it mm -hmm. um, short term long term you know daily weekly monthly intraday technical analysis will work on that commodities is another one anything that we can get charts for you can start to apply technical analysis with to it because it's basically we're looking at the law of probability the law of the probability of a move in a direction will happen. Is it yeah. 100%? No. But is fundamental analysis 100%? No. Because no. most of the fundamental analysis we see and read about is historical. Mm. So it's not forward looking, it's reverse looking. Well, look, I mean, you can't I've buy just gone yesterday's through returns. Looking at um, reporting season, and mm. that's an interesting experience looking at results. Mm. But there's always forecasts. Yeah, so correct. it's still forward looking depending on what information you're actually reading. But you, what you, you're talking more about the indicators, which are lagging indicators. Is that what you're referring to? Well, no, I'm saying fundamentals is lagging, but also a lot of these indicators are lagging, which is a really good point. I guess I we saw in... that in the GFC when there were, the industry was saying that these stocks were cheap and yet mm. um, we could see that they were likely to continue falling. Well, yeah, you get... One of the things that we find out with these indicators, and a lot of people listening to this podcast, unless they're a student of ours, may be using a lot of these or some of these indicators or in, in their trading. Because the end of the day is you see broker platforms and everything, they've got all these indicators on them and people think, oh, wow, that's really cool. Mm. But it doesn't matter whether you've got a Porsche or, or a Volkswagen, you can still drive it to A to B. It's just which one's the best and safest one to use. And people get sucked in by all these indicators and technical things. But to me, it's about getting consistent results. It's about getting non-conflicting results. And when you use a lot of these technical indicators that are computer generated, mm. we do get conflicting information from it. Look, I know which one I'd prefer to drive, but I don't know how other people, on, how safe other people on the road would be if I'm in the Porsche. I was going to say, you're in the, <laughs> and you're in the Volkswagen, aren't you? You're a Volvo driver. <laughs> V8 Volvo driver, but <laughs> something like that. But it really is, is, you know, to me, technical analysis is really, we're very strong fundamental proponents of fundamental analysis too. We're not poo-pooing that. Yeah. We're just saying mm. there's a place for fundamentals and technicals and we do teach people 
in our but deployment course to combine the two to get a better strategy. Generally, these traders that we're talking about that yeah. are experienced traders are not necessarily looking at fundamentals. No, they're not. They? They're not. Most and of them are looking at some of the indicators. Yeah, they are. And that's the thing is, and so whilst they can look at that, we don't think that they're the best way to trade. And there are better ways to trade, but uh, we won't say you trade exclusively without them. Mm. We just say to, to our students, learn to trade first. And then if you want to layer those on on top, up to you, you know how to test it and make sure they're going to add value or they're not. Yeah. And that's, and that's the key thing, isn't that it? Is. And a lot of people don't realise that. No. And we do have some blind. of our students or graduates send us charts and get our help and they put some of these indicators on. And, I, and I'll actually ask them the question, what is this telling you? Yeah. When I went through uni, because I was learning how to design a chemical mm. reactor and I thought, when am I ever going to need to do that? I and, don't know. But it's not the print. It's not the pr necessarily that you're going to use everything that you mm. learn in your course. It's, it's teaching you how to think. Mm. And that's what we do really well is teach people how to think and have the confidence to actually be able to break things down and have a look at how they're going to actually use it and what works best on what stock. Yeah. Mm. I, I know we, I talk about it in, you know, if I do, we do presentations, I talk about the be, do, have strategy. You know, to be a trader, you have to be the trader, mm. which means you have to do what the real trader does. And if yeah. you do that, then you'll have what the real trader has. True. But most people don't do what the real trader does because they don't make the decisions of the real trader. Mm. Um, and to me, it's like when somebody's talking to me about, you know, um, you know, getting educated and doing a course, I said, you're making a decision today based on your past. And that hasn't been a very good past in your trading history. And they go, yeah. I said, but you can't make your decision based on that person you're, you're thinking Anymore. of right now mm. because you want to be this trader that makes money consistently, replaces income, whatever they've told me, mm. and you want to be that person in one, two, three, four, five years' time. And they go, yeah. And I said, that's the person you need to focus, to focus on. on. What decision would that person make today? Mm. Would they say no to education or yes to education? And they go, They'd probably say yes. And Actually, I said, that's a really good way of putting it. And it is. Don't don't make your decision based on past experience. Make mm. your make your decision based on where you want to be, not where you have been. You don't drive a car looking at the rear vision mirror all the time. Yeah, you'll look, hit all all of the smart people that train people how to set mm. goals tell people to do that. Mm. Is to, you've got to start with the end in mind. Yeah, mm. and I remember standing, you know, in workshops with some of our students. In years gone by and they come up to me with a, a challenge and they're trading and they go, what would you do, Dale? And I went, no, you need to think about what I would do, mm. but you need to tell me what I would do. Mm -hmm. And they go, what do you mean? And I said, I'm not telling you what to do. You need to ask yourself, what would Dale do in this situation? Because then you're making a decision from a trader's mm. point of view. Yep. And they go, you would probably do, 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 do. And I went, you already know the answer. <laughs> and they go, yeah, I do. I said, well, then trust yourself. Mm. Always make decisions about where you want to be, not where you have been. That's and that's really what I want to say. So technical, I want to move on to trading strategy in a second, but basically I just wanted to sort of summarize it. Technical analysis is really some, it's a real versatile method of analysis that can fit any sort of process, whether short, medium, long-term income trading, um, capital gains, those sorts of stuff. But really it's designed to help people take um, advantage of the volatility in the market mm. when the market's moving up or down, that's volatility. And to get in at a good time to gain, you know, short, medium or longer term gains, you know, and all cash flow. Because mm. um, some people trade for income, some people trade for cash, uh, yeah, capital gain. And, and some, some people, people might, both. when they come and do our courses, might actually mm. see some of the techniques in the course that they've been familiar with outside. Yeah. But it's just the way that we actually teach it and have put it together with other techniques and shown key, them how to it? work it. Yeah, I mean, some people say, oh, I can find out what you teach all around the web. And yeah. I can find all those techniques around the web. I said, well, you can find. Individually. Individually, you can pieces. find a lot of them, but are they being taught the right way? But there's stuff that's just. A lot just, of day stuff. There's stuff day that's at just stuff. our IP you won't find anywhere else, like trend lines. And you go, oh, I know trend lines. I know you don't. Oh, yeah, but. We've got five rules for trend lines. There's some stuff in that module three that. that that nobody does. Nobody does. And nobody does it that way. And so there's a few things like that in there, but the, the real, real, real guts in the course is the process we take mm -hmm. people through, how we put it together, how we add one plus one mm -hmm. plus one plus one plus one to take people through a solid structure and process. And that's, and how often do you see somebody's been trading for a while, they go, oh my God, thank you, because you're now giving me a focus and a structure mm -hmm. that I can follow for success rather mm. than me throwing darts at a wall in the wind on a and windy day. And trying to work it out. You know, you know, or throwing a bucket of water into the mm. wind and getting hit, that sort of stuff. Um, and so 
that's the critical stuff and the support and the mentoring and the challenging people to be that trader, think like that trader so yeah. they can have what the trader has. So that's so the real benefit. For, for a trader, mm -hmm. obviously they're not even going to be looking at the trading mentor course because that's just no, to, cause it's, it's some, for whether someone is deciding whether they want to get into the market or not. Correct. Just, that's a, it's, if people often ring us up and go, I want to do the, you know, I want to do the trading mentor course. Mm. And I go, why? And they go, oh, I'm looking at being a trader. I'm like, oh, that's great. But that's our beginners scratching the surface type course. Yeah, but if people are already calling themselves yeah, traders. but the reason it? they're asking is because it's the cheapest course. Right. You know, it's like, oh, it's a cheap course. I can handle that. But it's not, and I often say to them, well, if the goal is to be a full-time trader, like you're telling me, why would you start at a beginner's course? Why wouldn't you start in the right course for you, which is the diploma course? That's right. It's not even the short course in share trading, which is the first three modules of the diploma. That mm -hmm. is for people who are running self-managed super funds, or who want to be active term. investors. But if you seriously yeah. want to be a trader, then I say to them, the only course you mm -hmm. need to be thinking about is the diploma. Because it doesn't matter whether you've never bought a share in your life before mm -hmm. or you've been trading for 16 years like that guy I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you will get your goal. Yep. That's, there's no doubt in my mind, but I want to move on to trading tools and, and, and uh, sorry, trading strategies, sorry, okay. before we move on to trading tools and platforms. Do you want to talk a this bit about This stuff I really, really are? enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, in the beginning when we pulled apart lots of different techniques and because it had to yeah. be teachable. It did. Yeah. You know, so we had to work out what we were going to teach people in mm -hmm. terms of strategies and it had to be teachable. And so with the strategy, the thing that I like the most yeah. is that um, it was it was coming to the realisation that one size does not fit all Correct. because when I f my first experience in the market was that someone was trying to tell me, here's a strategy, you know, you can pay this much for a course and you've got a technique and you go tick and tick a couple of boxes and there it. you go. You're going to be a multimillionaire and, driving and a Porsche. And just having the, I guess, because having, a, you know, the background that I have, thinking to myself, I questioned that and when I start to see different things I sort of try to put it together in my mind. So for me, the strategies that we put together really are all encompassing because it means that mm. you can trade any way that you like. So for What's me, it's being about independent. For me, it's about um, I guess it's about the flexibility and having um, the choice of um, the strategy and the approach that you want, which is what I really think is great. Yeah, because I mean, how often? And I, I, I think I've said that about ten times already on this podcast. Well, we see people come to us who have tried to be educated by some of these other educators around the world, mm. you know, and, and, you know, America and all these other places. And they do a weekend workshop and it might be 500 bucks or $1,000 or $2,000. And then they try and sell you the 10 or 15 and $20,000 course. But they still don't teach people how to trade because mm. what they're teaching is very lightweight all the time. There's not enough depth of, into it because there's a difference between knowledge and understanding. And people have a lot of knowledge we find because they've been watching YouTube videos and stuff yeah. and they go, oh, I know what a trend line is or I know what a Bollinger Band is. Well, great. How do you make money from it? Okay, go do and you show really us how you apply it. <laughs> how do you apply it and how do you apply it in the right <laughs> context because trading strategies are, rule, are not just one rule. They're a set of rules yeah. that people, that a trader has that they follow to make a trading decision. So a buy signal could have five rules on it or 10 yeah, rules Yeah, and on why, it, why so many rules? Because it's about making sure that you're managing your risk, not just, mm. it's not just about applying something in a way that makes sense. Mm. It's about making sure that, because the trend lines are there to ma help you manage the risk. Well, it's not just trend lines, but it's all the rules. Because I mean, even, even tra fundamental and technical mm. analysis are rules that we combine together. That's what we teach people into the course as well, because I know you and me have done that research and we've looked at it. It's like if a stock is fundamentally strong, mm -hmm. good, and technically strong, the growth out of that is phenomenal mm. compared to one that's fundamentally weak and technically good or one that's technically... Yeah, it might be more sporadic. You might be able to make some short-term trades out of it that but are it good. But it's not going to give you the big yeah. gains, but if it's fundamentally poor and technically poor, it always goes down. Yeah, you've got to be very careful. You've got to be really, really mm. careful. But combining those tools, and I mean, some of the popular trading strategies that we hear people do out there. I know how many times I've had somebody on the phone says, oh, I'm a swing trader, you know, or um, I, I'm a position trader. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are several others. I know, I know we're basically, we're position traders. That's what we do. We buy mm -hmm. low, sell high. Mm -hmm. And however long that is, and other people are swing trading, which is probably another word for that is buying the dip. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people think swing trading is buying the dip. When I talk about swing trading and you talk about swing trading, it's not even close to that. But buying the dip is supposed to be, the whole concept of that is supposed to be when the institutions mm. stop buying, mm. right, and they just ease off the accelerator mm. and the stocks will go sideways, the price dips mm. and they're but just trading is, in a when range. when is a dip, not a dip? But that's the thing. So that what, when mm. when a stock falls away, when you get into the dip, people not think a dip, that's you become buying a the dip. dip. That's right, <laughs> and it's not the dip, is it? It's not the dip. So, yeah. but again, it's it, but there are lots of mm. whiz bang trading strategies, and I know you did one that was a famous one. That there was a book made out of it that sold millions of copies, mm. and it was in the US one, and I can't remember the name of it, and you may even remember it. But when you looked at it, so I think it was like buy in January every single year. Mm. Or something like that, you know, buy these stocks in January every single year and you'll make a lot of money. And it was a lot of BS, wasn't it? It oh, just yeah. doesn't work. I've read quite a few of those sort of so things. So there's a whole time. lot of BS, but there's lots of strategy. Mm. But choosing the right strategy for you, and what I mean by that is choosing your strategy, not any strategy, because the strategy needs to be congruent to you and your beliefs and your style and your outcomes that you want, not just somebody else's strategy. Mm. And that's the biggest issue that I find with traders because it's so crucial for your long-term success that just you own that strategy. Exactly. And to me, it means, and the reason why we get so much success is because we help you find the strategy that aligns with your risk tolerances, your trading goals, the available mm. time that you have. I know that's a big one we talk about. Oh, yeah. Is the available time. It's no use if you are somebody who works 40 hours a week and got three kids and you're always taking the sports and you've got half an hour a week. No way known you're going to be trading, day trading. It's just mm. not possible. You can't trade FX. You can't trade options. You can't trade CFDs. Yeah, people think it takes a lot of time, but the learning part takes time. Once you've actually got the strategies mm. and then you get it, get all of your um, stocks set up and you know what you're going to trade, that doesn't take a lot of but time But there's a all. strategy to Very suit what your goals and outcome are that time. Mm. But you need to understand how to create that strategy because – it's not just that piece of paper that, you know, you go to the weekend workshop and here's that, here's your trading plan, tick, 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 mm. and that's fine. If that's incongruent with who you are, how successful will somebody be following it? And how do you know how to change it and modify it? You've got to be, the market's you've got to learn changing that. all the time, isn't it? How <laughs> Definitely. often do we seen that? I just said it again. For somebody <laughs> who's got that carved in stone strategy that when the market changes personality, they're stuffed. Mm. So some of these indicators that we mentioned earlier, the great during bull markets, mm-hmm. But it's not until the SHIT hits the fan that you know how good a trader you are. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, in a sideways market like we saw between 91 and 95 or something and we saw a sideways mm-hmm. market um, a couple of years ago, using moving averages, you're going in and add in and add in and add in and out. You're not getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. Whereas we're out of those sorts of areas and we're into other areas. Yeah. So having a right trading strategy is really, really important. I and, like this point too, mm-hmm. um, not just about – if this is part of the strategy you mentioned as well, that if you have a full-time job mm. and can only trade in the evenings, um, okay. so don't try, don't try to day trade um, and try to fit it in during your working hours because that's not going to, to help your psychology. Do that. They've got the apps on their phones yeah. and they try and trade during the day and they're, they're, they're distracted for work. Yeah. But, I mean, we teach people the best time to be to do your analysis and determine your buys and sells is when the market's not open. Mm. And people go, how do you trade like that? And I went, better, because you're not emotional. Yeah, how many people try to do all their trading during the day? They're doing, they're trying to stuff and they're they're watching the market go up and down. They've got it on their computer at work or their phone and they're distracted by it. But when the Mm. market's open uh, and you've got money on the market, are you more or less emotional? When the market's open, a person's going to be more emotional, mm. if, especially if they don't have any rules and they don't know how they're going to exit. Yeah, but outside, when the market's closed mm. and you're at home, can you make a more rational oh, decision? Of course. Then you've got this headspace. If you have to watch the market during the day because you're fearful of losing money, then mm. you know there's something seriously wrong with your trading strategy. Yeah. If you can't not have your phone by your side looking at the market, then there's something wrong with your mm. trading strategy. If you can't place a trade and be comfortable with that, knowing that you know what's happening and what is highly likely to happen and have a process of what to buy and when to buy it and when to sell it and know when you're going to sell it, then there's something wrong with your mm. trading strategy. So you know what? People who yeah. are trying to intraday trade and they're sitting oh, yeah. there on their phones, if they're working, that's just nuts in my opinion. Nuts. And that's why they're hitting me. If they're retired, mm. then that's probably okay, but you'd still find that you don't actually need to do that anyway. There's no. a lot of people that start out that way, though. 
No, but trading doesn't. A lot of people think trading takes all day long, or it's, you're sitting in front of your computer all day long, and it does. It, trading no. can be one hour a month. Mm. You know, it can be one hour a week. It can That's be right. forty hours a week. It's just your choice. But to me, the more time you spend doing it is generally the inverse of how much money you make. Mm. Because the more you do it, the more emotional you are. And well, the hourly rate Because you're so way. much on the market all the time. And, you know, and I remember years ago I had this guy who was just started a course and he, he I was on the phone to him and I go, what's, what's going on? He goes, he goes, I've done 36 trades this month. And I went, so you're losing money. And he went, how do you know? And I said, because you've just started the course and you've placed 36 trades. Ain't no way you're making money <laughs> because you don't know how to yet. And he went, ah. Oh. He said, what should I do? I said, don't trade until you learn how to, until we teach you how to actually mm. trade properly. He rings me the next month. He says, I've done another 30 something trades. And I said, and you're still losing money. And he goes, how do you know? And I said, because there's not that many trades for you with your level of knowledge. I said, when are you going to understand that it's not about trading often, it's about trading well. Mm. And that trading well means doing the right process to buy and to sell that fits with who you are and your congruency. We can figure out, if you want to trade a lot, we can figure out our whole strategy to let you do that. that busy. <laughs> but if you want to be that busy, you know, and he goes, oh, yeah, but I want to get out of what I'm doing. I'm in construction, da, 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 and I want to get my back. And blah, 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 How many blah, blah, times blah, blah, blah. have we heard that? And I went, yeah, well, slow is fast. Mm. I mean, what do you mean? I go, slow is fast. Mm. Do it the right way the first time. It's so much faster. Because mm. how often do we get people that have been 5, 10, 15 years trying to trade, trying to do everything and not spend money to learn mm. properly, and yet they still can't trade properly. They're one of those four we mentioned, yeah. you know, and yet if they did our course first, they'd already be su super successful. Okay, now what do people need to know about trading tools and platforms? Good question. Well, look, trading, I mean... We talk about that and, and, and to me, I've purposely put this last mm. because often, how often do you get the question when somebody's never traded before, what software should I buy? Yep. And I go. Often the first question. Yeah, I go, you don't What know. software do you use, Dale? What software do I use? That's oh, what they say. Yeah, what software do you use? And I go, well, is that going to magically make you a great trader? Software doesn't make you a great trader. It's like me going, oh, I'm going to build a house. So I go to a builder, I go, what tool should I buy? <laughs> I don't know how to use them, but what tool should I buy? I can see you out there with and the, it's like, the builder oh, with your I hard got a, hat and your I got a truck full bag. of these Milwaukee tools and all these trades because <laughs> I can see all the, the, the guys, the traders on the building sites. They've got Milwaukee, which is supposed to be the best for, mm. for people. So I've got all these great tools, rock up to this empty block of land with this truck full of tools, and now what do I do? Okay, here's your nails. Go and hammer in a few. Bang, yeah. there goes your yeah, nail. You're gonna, black. You're going to get a you sour black. EP house, aren't you? <laughs> it's going to be like the three little piggy houses. Fall over. Um, and okay. that's really what's going to happen. But So it can be simple charting software. Yeah. It can be online browser-based type of stuff, mm -hmm. information portals. Yeah. So when people mm -hmm. are starting out, what you're saying is you don't need the software. No, you don't. And, and this in our trading mentor course, for those, if you've never bought a stock in your life and you're thinking about trading and you're not sure, and you're one of those people listening to this, because obviously this podcast is about people who've been trading for a while. But if you are one of those people listening who've not really traded much, in the trading mentor course... We give you a trial version of mm. Optima, which is what we both use. Um, and I think it's like 30 days they get quite. But I still get them saying, well, you know, should I buy it? And I go, no. <laughs> they go, but why not? I go, you don't need it. Mm. For what we've taught you, online is fine. Yeah. There's plenty of uh, your broking platforms have enough mm. on their charts for you for that yeah. level. So if what, you want to be point, serious trader, you've got to go. At what point do they need it? Well, once they've made the decision to be a, a trader, a serious trader, not play around, mucking around like most people. Mm. It's somebody I go, I want to learn properly. I want to learn the right way. And I want to have a serious process and become somebody who supplements, replaces my income, trades full time, yeah. whatever that is for them. But when they, they have to make the decision first. But if you just want to be somebody who's an active investor, you don't need something mm. like an optimal. This is So what about, what about algorithms? Like we talk, yep. we, we were using algos years ago. Yeah, but there's difference between brokers' algorithms yeah. and traders' algorithms. Yep. So brokers' algorithms could be like um, processing a trade. Like mm. if you got a ten million dollar, you want to put onto a stock, you could use things like um, an algorithm that you, it breaks up that trade into over the day fifty parcels, and it, yep. as one gets taken, the algorithm puts the next one on. Or 
things like iceberg. Yeah, it makes your life easier if you're trading big easier. sums, I can tell you. But with, with traders, mm. they try and write all these algorithms to use those technical indicators that we talked yeah, about Yeah, and earlier, to try to sort of work out some sort of system. And backtest the system. And how many people have we met that have done that and, you know, They've got so excited. I don't know how many yeah, meetings I've had with people and they go, oh, I'm so excited. Mm. I've got these algorithms, blah, blah, blah. It does this, does that. And I go, great. And then I meet them a year later and then they're not making any money. Well, they just walked away from it. They've walked away from it because mm. they're just – and, yeah, you can program things. Even Optima has a scripting tool in it that you can write algorithms mm. to do back testing and trade and all that sort of stuff. But it's not where you need to be because unless you understand how to trade, then an algorithm is not going to help you because the individual still has to place the trades. Okay, so what you're saying mm -hmm. is for people who actually do know that they want to tr learn to trade, yes, what tools and what platform do they need? You're basically saying at the start they don't need one. No. But they'll need a platform to trade off. Yeah, but you've got free ones like Incredible Charts. Mm. It's IncredibleCharts.com. Uh, yeah, there's a free version of that and then you can also pay a subscription to get. And for somebody who's just a beginner or just an active mm -hmm. investor, that's perfectly fine. And there are other ones like I know there's one called bigcharts.com and their broker websites. If you have a, a Comsec account, I mean, you know, I trade with Macquarie and their charts are CRA pay. Mm. But, but is look, it okay? Brokers, brokers charting facility is probably enough for someone who's probably enough doing for most very, people. And very that's what I'm saying. stuff. So even the Macquarie mm. ones I think are CRA pay. Mm. But I can get enough out of that. With some basic but that's only knowledge. because you've got knowledge and you know Correct. how to and make that's the buys and sells and know yeah. where they are. That's my filter. Yeah. But for a beginner, an active investor, it's perfectly fine. Um, you know, there's other people that talk about, I know I've had a few people who are trading going, talking to me, oh, this trading view, oh, I use trading view, you know, and I'm a great trader. And I went, and I had a look at it and I went, yeah, it's okay. But, mm. you know, and it's great for beginners, I think mm. for beginners, but it would drive you and me crazy. Mm as a software package because, um, I mean, it's got all those indicators in and it looks super sexy. Look, I haven't like. looked at any for years because we used to get them mm. thrown at us in the early days. And we did. Were trying to, yeah. People were trying to convince us to try different packages, but I don't see any need to. I'm really happy with what we've got. Yeah, and, that, and you know, there's one, you know, I spoke to a gentleman on the weekend. I met him and he uses Metastock and I've used Metastock mm. and that's okay. That's but, all right for some, but some people get yeah, really confused. They do because it's a bit more technical. You mm. need to have a bit more of a scientific brain on that one. But there are plenty out there. Mm. You know, we we prefer Optima. A, it's an Australian company. B, it does everything we need and, 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 and more than what we need. Yep. Um, and I think and it's a great tool for people that are beginners right through. It will grow. As the trader grows, everything's already there for them to mm. experience. That's right. They don't have to go and get another piece of software and another one. That's why we choose it. Because some software is written for a specific type of market like CFDs or FX. And I know a lot of people trading FX. You see all these, you know, FX companies promoting, you know, whether it's Plus 500 or whoever they are or Saxo or there's bucket loads of these FX companies or trading FX. And they talk about, oh, we have MT4 and MT5. And I'm, well, big deal. I still wouldn't do any of my analysis on MT4 and MT5. Not yeah. a hope in hell that I would do that. If I have to place my trade through MT4, MT5, I'll have to do that. But it'll only be the actual order book that I will use in that software because if you're using that software, the FX broker knows exactly. Where's exact, your data go? Where's your data going? And mm. the, the FX broker knows exactly what you're doing to get your trades. So they use that against you. Mm, and if people don't think it happens, it happens every day. Mm. So that I would always have my analysis separate, always separate to my broker. Uh, and it's just something critical for me because it's just one of those things. But Look, I've run know, out of water. Have you? Yeah. Why? So, And I'm not talking? a camel. So I just wanted to say we're up to the final round off now, yeah. aren't we? Because we've, we've really covered everything. Yep. So we've covered uh, technical analysis, but yeah. not in the sort of detail that, you know, that I'd love to, but we've, we've ideally I'd like to be doing a little demo of what it looks like and that sort of thing, but that's not Maybe what we're doing. Maybe one day we can. Here. Um, that's what we do on the show. Um, mm. Oh, we do. People can watch our Talking Wealth level. show. If you go to talkingwealth.com, you can subscribe to that portal and you'll be able to see issues often all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the, the students get to see a lot more than that. But look, trading strategies, we've talked about the trading tools and platforms. Yeah. So is there anything else that someone who's been trading for a while needs to, to think about? Well, I think it's 
having the having the tools one thing and knowing how to use them is another one. Mm. And I think that's where, again, you get people going, and, and I've had people shove laptops in front of my face going, what do you think of this? Or how did you like this? Here's my software. What do you think of that? And it's like, well, they're great, but how, can you make money out of that? Mm. How do you know? It's not the software that makes you the money. It's the six inches between your ears that makes you the money. Yeah. Because I've never exactly. seen an algorithm or um, computer generated thing. Even AI, I don't necessarily think. I'm still super skeptical about whether AI will be able to trade as good as a human being. Mm. Um, and I may be turned out to be wrong, but at this point in time, the market is emotional. It, whilst it has mathematical. Um, mathematics behind it it's still humans fear and greed that runs the market so to me you know because we have talked about you know technical analysis trading mm -hmm. strategies trading tools and platforms and i think you know to me it's all about identifying those opportunities yeah. isn't it and, and opportunities and then being able to execute the trade properly mm. going into the trade and then feeling confident about executing the trade going out of it yeah correct and mm. to me as i said earlier it's a difference between information and education there's also a vast difference between knowledge and understanding. Just knowing mm. what something is doesn't mean you understand it or True. how to make money from that. But combining the elements that we're talking about, you know, in terms of the technical analysis, you know, the um, trading strategies that we talked about and also the tools, the data and everything else, like data. You know, and how many people say to you, oh, where can I get free stock market data from? And as soon as they say that, I go, you're not a trader. Yeah. Like seriously, you want to trust your future to any data that could be free. You could go and buy a free hammer somewhere. But yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Can you get a free a hammer really from cheap somewhere? old one. I don't know whether you can get a free out. hammer from anybody, but mm. the important is, is if, if, you're, if, if you're serious, mm. you pay for the right tools. And just getting free data that's, you know, that's raw data that's unadjusted and everything is just fraught with danger. But people try and do things. Because they don't understand They don't why. understand. And it's mm. about the, what's the value. And, and Buffett says, you know, value is, price is what you pay, mm. value is what you get. Mm. If you're paying nothing for your data, then you're going to get crap data. It's just crap. Mm. And if you're trying to get an education off YouTube and become a full-time trader, well, then you know the outcome yep. of that. And it's going to be the long, long, hard road. But combining, understanding three areas that we talked a bit about and those elements, if they do that well and they get the right technical analysis skills and they learn the right way the first time, learning the right buy and sell rules, the right analysis techniques, the right strategies. Oh, it's a huge investment in So itself. much easier, so mm. much simpler. And I think you pull it all together and you'll be trading well very, very soon. But why make your job hard for yourself? And that's all I think what we're mm. trying to say here is you can go looking for the holy grail. Well, I think the, the diagram that we put up at mm. one of our workshops years ago was the perfect and classic example. Yeah. It was showing, and I can't remember where you got this from, but... It was showing it was an arrow, yeah. right? And instead of just drawing it a straight line, the arrow sort of went, the path was from A to B, right? Yeah. From, yeah. And instead of just going straight from A to B, the, the trader's path went whew, zigzag, zigzag all the way. Now, the distance that someone would actually be away from that line would depend on mm. their decisions or their choices along the way, really. Yeah, um, I mean, what you're saying is the trading growth is not a linear line. Mm. going from a low of one to a exactly. high of ten. It, it scoots all over the place. And at the, at the end of the day, the individual needs to decide is how hard or how easy do I want to make it for myself? Mm. And trying to self-educate with YouTube and some books is great. It'll teach mm. you some stuff and you'll get some information out of it. But will you learn to become a great trader? And the thing is, is how long is it going to take you? But also they don't understand the cost of that. That's true. So it's, it's cost in time, time cost. and there's a cost in losses and mm. frustration and all that yeah. because, you know, uh, I was w looking, you know, our students have a student and graduates Facebook mm. group um, and the other week somebody who's done the first three modules of our diploma course because they enrolled in the short course, they were asking about the last two modules saying whether it was worthwhile them doing it and the other students come back, you know, said, well, if you're thinking about being a trader, these ones are critical. You need the last two modules. First three are great if you're running a self-managed super fund or you want to be an active investor and a bit of a – and a trader but not a mm. serious trader. But And then they said, oh, but it's X dollars. You know, it's it's expensive and the, and the people come back and go, and that's one trade. <laughs> it's like, mm. what are you worried about? Oh, someone else who was actually on the page. Yeah, said that's one trade. Right. 
And that how many right. times have we heard that the people have paid for our course in one trade or two mm. trades and people buying our trading mentor course pay for it before they finish it and they're trading. It's just the list goes on. And it's all about mm. if you're not worried about spending money to learn how the right way is, then the right way to trade is, then you're looking at things the wrong way. It's not a cost. It's your education is not a cost to you. It's an investment in you that'll reap benefits year in, year out for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 mm. years. And you can make tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands mm. of dollars, but you need to make a decision is how, how long and hard do you want to make your education exactly. and how costly do you want to make it? Because I don't know how long you, how many people you've spoken to that the cost oh. of their education has been hundreds of thousands of dollars in losses. And if they added up the time they spent and added a dollar figure to that, their hourly wage, mm. it would be Ten oh. to hundred times more than what our course cost. Look, I know when I first started looking mm. at the market, I spent hours upon hours looking at um, mm. news, reading newspaper articles, magazines, just yeah. trying to understand the market and learn yeah. about the industry and yeah. what they talk about. Reading magazines, paying that for was subscriptions, a lot of time. chat forums, mm. talking to people, making mistakes, make all the. Mm. Well, wouldn't is if you were trading, isn't it a nice benefit to have somebody who knows what they're doing to be able to talk to? Oh, fantastic! To check That's, you. That's one of the biggest things that people actually said. How do you know you're doing it right course. if you've read something or watched something? Yeah. How do you know you're applying it if you can't get somebody to check you? Well, that's why like during the course doing. we're doing that through the whole process so they're getting that constant feedback about how they're but doing. But how important is that? That is so critical. Yeah, that's why we and have a driving And that's why you and I have an argument about whether, um, you know, people mm. who are looking to inve investors versus traders, you say traders should do the diploma yeah. Without even thinking about it. Well, they shouldn't. It's no brainer to me. But to me, I think investors should do it as well without thinking about it because I would not want them to miss out on the stuff that happens after Module 3. I just think that it's mm. so critical for that, well, you know, you that go. whole spatial thing that I was talking about yeah. um, in terms of their mind and the way that they're going to think about things and be able to make good decisions going forward. Okay. I'm going to paint a picture. You've never skydived in your life before. You're up in a plane with a parachute on. And you're standing at the open door and you haven't had any instructions other than watching your video. How confident have you been landing on that ground safely? I wouldn't step out. Okay. But that's what a lot of people do with trading. Mm. They watch a few videos or read a book and they're standing at that plane jumping mm. out. Whereas, you know, you need to go through lots of... If it of was a bungee jump, different. Different. But I'd still want some instruction, but still, still jump off. <laughs> but that's the point is unless you've got somebody who knows and is highly qualified behind you checking everything you do to ensuring mm. you're not only understanding what you've learned, mm -hmm. but can apply it in the right manner and in the right context to build that trading strategy mm. that's built for you. Because we don't give people a trading plan. We yeah. give them a blank trading plan and help them fill it out based on- I know. We what. give them lots of trading plans, so to speak. Correct. And then, then they get to work out what's how to pull that all together. We yeah, we help How them. to pull, it, put yeah. it all together, but then mm. they get to choose and that's what- Fantastic. Yeah, they choose and build their own trading plan and strategies that is with yeah. them. But again, that's with our help. But again, it's very much to me, it's like, you know, if some, if you've watched. How, how much would people pay for us to just give them the trading plans? You think? They probably, look, you and me could sit down today and write a trading plan. If we put, put a big in book together. And put a little book together. And put I all the trading plans yeah, together. Yeah, but I can guarantee done. we could give that book and people would pay money for that book, but I still guarantee 90% wouldn't be able to follow it properly. Would people pay twenty or 30000 for that? Possibly. But they still wouldn't be able More? to follow it. Mo the majority wouldn't follow it properly because they still wouldn't understand the depth that's underneath all that stuff. Yeah. And they, their psychology would be in the road of that because they didn't construct it Yeah, because as they're working through it, they're building all of that in their brain. Even though we've yep. laid it out for them, he'd use this rule and that rule and that rule and that rule and that rule and this strategy to do this. They, you'd get some that would be successful, mm. but the greater percentage wouldn't be successful because they haven't earned the right to be successful. Mm -hmm. You have to go through and get your hands dirty, understand and pull these things apart like we pull all the techniques and strategies apart and then we pull them back together again. And we, I've sometimes I'll get an email from a student and go, well, I've done this exercise mm. but I haven't made any money out of it, Dale. What's wrong? You're supposed to be teaching me how to trade profitably. And I said, no, you know how not to do it. <laughs> and they go. That's priceless. Oh. Because you can give people all the perfect examples mm. in the world and they think trading's rosy and it's easy. It's not necessarily, mm. it's not hard to learn and trading will challenge you. But if why, if you learn how something breaks, then you know how to fix. That's the key. And that's the big key between teaching great traders and 
average traders. Mm. We teach traders to know when your trading is breaking mm -hmm. so that you can adjust and fix yep. without losing lots of money. And this is where those people we spoke about earlier don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Their trading breaks, they lose lots of money and then they hit and miss and all the other things get frustrated, you know, blah, 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 blah. And well, they go after specky stocks and things. Change to... their strategies mm. when they shouldn't be. They should just be looking at the market and comparing the market to what their strategy or using the right strategy for the right market and the right context. I mean, thinking about that, some people could just, if they were mm. in that situation where they were not mm. being profitable, could just pull back to the top 20 stocks and mm. start there, couldn't they? Yeah, but then again, that's what I'm saying is what's the benefit of having somebody mm. like us and our team behind them to be able to go, here's my strategy. This is not working. What can I do? And mm. we can start walking them through the process to fix that with them and hold their hand. And, and that's the huge benefit. It's not whether you can get what we teach out there on videos and books out there. That's not the important thing. It's about the passion that we have for helping people to understand and truly take control of their own life and their own future and their own results. And to me, that's the huge benefit of you know, doing the course, the diploma course and, and getting it right the first time because the road, as I said, you know, slow is fast. Actually, that slow reminds me, I need to, I need to um, depart from my station now because I need to go and answer some student emails. Okay. So anyway, so just in wrapping all this up, if, if people combine all those three elements, they can take their trading to the next level. And that's know, really that's what exciting, this, this podcast is about. So really, I think I'm going to urge people to start exploring. And if you do want to talk to us, please give us a call on 1-800-858-272. Go to wealthwithin.com.au. Go under the education tab and click on the education courses, have a look at it, talk to our team. They're all traders themselves. Every single person that you talk to in our um, account managers, they're all traders themselves or our assessors are traders themselves. So they know the journey that you're taking. So please give them a call. Also check out talkingwealth.com. That's our, our streaming channel. There's hundreds and hundreds of interviews there on all sorts of things from psychology, you know, to business, entrepreneurship, you know, property, shares, stock market. Um, superannuation, the list just goes on and on. We've got lots and lots of experts bringing great content to you and, and I'm getting lots of feedback Actually, from Actually, I just, I had a mm -hmm. conversation with one of the education consultants the other day. He said, and some people must have been listening to some of your podcasts or mm -hmm. maybe our podcasts um, because he, he said that he had people calling up saying, look, I've been listening to Dale and I just want to do the course. Simple as that. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's about learning about yourself too. And to mm -hmm. me, that's where I'm getting a lot of the traders and other people watching these videos on Talking Wealth, they're actually getting a much better understanding of what they can do to be successful in whatever that pursuit is, whether it's business or mm -hmm. um, or whether it's investing or all sorts of different areas. And mindset is just a whole lot of stuff. So head over to talkingwealth.com and, you know, you can you know, subscribe for a seven-day trial and it's only like $3.50 or something a week. It's just dirt cheap and you get... My marker app every Monday, you get our live stream every Tuesday night. So it's really, really worth the value, but head over to there. But also just before we finish up, if you listen to this podcast, make sure you give us a five-star review. We love it. If you love, we love you to love us, our podcast and giving us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever podcasting app you're using that helps us to find more people mm -hmm. to talk to. But that's it from us from Talking Wealth. You want to say anything before you say goodbye? No, I think we've covered it really yeah. well and I'm looking forward to the next one. All right. Well, you've been listening to Talking Wealth with Janine Cox and Dale Gillam. We're the analyst here or the chief and head analyst here at Wealth Within. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.